Thank you, worship team. I think I speak for all of us when we just say we're so thankful for you all. And our sound team back there and Joe doing the slides. There's just a lot of things that happen and a lot of gifts to be shared that are blessings to us. So thank you. Uh, including, thank you, Naomi, for filling in for me last week. Like, I think it's so cool that we've got a congregation of people that just are so capable of doing that. And it's, it's wonderful, too. So, um, and uh, you probably already know this, but the reason that I was gone last week, a lot of us were gone, actually, was because of Kayla and Willie's wedding, if we could get that picture up there. Look at that. Um, for those of you who don't know, Kayla was our former youth pastor, and Willie was just a celebrity among us. We loved him. And, and all our point people there, like, honestly, we had so much fun. I'm proud to say that we closed the dance floor that night. Like, seriously, all the people from South Dakota out there dancing all night and having a great time until the last song. And so, and I think you're right, Naomi, there's just like, there, there's a family aspect where we enjoy being with each other, and I think that was represented there at the wedding, so, and, and that's what makes weddings such a pleasure, too, and, and Delton and JC's wedding, too, we've got some of their family here uh, today, so uh, it's the people, the people, is so significant, um, but one of the other things that I found really significant there at that wedding, it was in Menominee, Wisconsin, and, and I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but I'm from Wisconsin, <laughs> just about every sermon I say something about it, um, and it had been like five years since I'd been back to Wisconsin, ever since mom and dad um, moved uh, to Sioux Falls. There's just not as much reason to go back there anymore. Uh, and so it was really cool to be there. And, and really, honestly, like, there's something significant about place. Like, w- when you're in, like, I felt like I was home. Because there's something about Wisconsin for me that, like, there's a nostalgia about it. And, and it's not just, like, the shenanigans that we used to get into. I'm not going to talk about those this week, Wendy. Um, don't want to make you nervous again, but, but part of what was so nostalgic about it for me was, um, like the trees and the rivers and the lakes and the wildlife and, uh, just the country roads and, and, and the, um, dairy farms and like so much of what makes Wisconsin, Wisconsin. It's the most underrated state. It's like absolutely beautiful there in that place. And so um, it was really a joy to be around there. And like, like mom and dad, they just trained us to love nature. Uh, and so when I'm back in Wisconsin, I, I'm just like taking it all in. In fact, as you know, I also talk about biking a lot. I got an opportunity to go on a really nice ride while we were there. So Saturday morning, um, as the sun was coming up, I found this trail that just goes along the uh, Red Cedar River for like 18 miles. And so I got a little video of that there. And um, yeah, it's just like, like this for 18 miles. Just this beautiful, gorgeous river uh, and all of the you know, like winding road and all of the nature, the wildlife. We got a few uh, pictures up there too. I'll just scroll through those. That was like kind of like a cliffside that had water trickling down. There was just a random, like, water source that was coming into the river there, and, and then the river, like, right after that one, I took that, a bald eagle flew right over my head, um, and then, and then the birds, of course. I, got get, I didn't take these pictures, but I saw rose-breasted grosbeaks, and I saw, next, American red starts, and I saw indigo buntings. Yes! Which, those are, like, amazing because they're, like, an iridescent blue. They just, like, I mean, it's like you see them and you can't believe that they exist. And it was, like, one of those things where, like, I was just in awe. Like, I, I kept getting off my bike and taking pictures. And I think if I would have taken pictures of all the things that I could have done, like, I would have missed the wedding later in the evening because <laughs> it was just, like, so much to take in. And, and fortunately, the mosquitoes were so awful out there that, like, the second I'd get off my bike, they'd just attack me. And, like, I'm like, I better get home or I'm going to be, I'm having no blood left in me, you know, <laughs> just like a skeleton uh, limping forward. So uh, it was just so significant to me. Uh, nature is such a, a healing, powerful thing for us all. And so I know that you know what I'm talking about, right? Like, like your place might not be Wisconsin, but I know that you've got a place, right? Uh, and I know that today is Father's Day. And like when it comes to men, like the way that we're marketed to many often, like oftentimes it's just like hunting, fishing, loving every day, you know, like, 
or, or hiking or camping or just like being outdoors because the outdoors, even for men that have a hard time showing their emotions sometimes, like there's something about it that's just like soothing to our souls. Like we, we need it. And as we've been uh, going through the Psalms, uh, the Psalms talk about creation and the beauty of creation a lot. Uh, And then we're going to be looking at Psalm 104 today. And this is really a celebration of the power of God on all display revealed in his magnificent creation. It's just, it's all about just praising God for like the beauty of this world. It's like, I can't even express it all because it's so beautiful. And and as we read this, um, I'm also going to just be showing, I found some YouTube channel that had a bunch of inspiring nature scenes. So, um, we're going to be showing that as we read this psalm as well. So we can go ahead and get that rolling here. Psalm 104. Let all that I am praise the Lord. O oh Lord my God, how great you are. You are robed with honor and majesty. You're dressed in a robe of light. You stretch out the starry curtain of the heavens. You lay out the rafters of your home in the rain clouds. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride upon the wings of the wind. The winds are your messengers. Flames of fire are your servants. You place the world on its foundation so it would never be moved. You clothe the earth with floods of water, water that covered even the mountains. At your command, the water fled. At the sound of your thunder, it hurried away. Mountains rose and valleys sank to the levels you decreed. Then you set a firm boundary for the seas so they would never again cover the earth. You make springs pour water into the ravines so streams gush down from the mountains. They provide water for all the animals and the wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds nest beside the streams and sing among the branches of the trees. You send rain on the mountains from your heavenly home, and you fill the earth with the fruit of your labor. You cause grass to grow for the livestock and plants for people to use, and allow them to produce food food from the earth, wine to make them glad olive oil to soothe their skin, and bread to give them strength. The trees of the Lord are well cared for, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests, and the storks make their homes in the cypresses. High in the mountains live the wild goats, and the rocks form a refuge for the hyraxes. You made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to set. You send the darkness, and it becomes night, when all the forest animals prowl about. Then the young lions roar for their prey, stalking the food provided by God. At dawn, they slink back into their dens to rest. Then people go off to their work, where they labor until evening. Oh, Lord, what a variety of things you have made. In wisdom, you've made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here's the ocean, vast and wide, teeming with life of every kind, both large and small. See the ships sailing along, and Leviathan, which you made to play in the sea. They all depend on you to give them food as they need it. 
When you supply it, they gather it. You open your hand to feed them, and they're richly satisfied. But if you turn away from them, they panic. When you take away their breath, they die and turn again to dust. When you give them your breath, life is created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord continue forever. The Lord takes pleasure in all he has made. The earth trembles at his glance. The mountains smoke at his touch. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God to my last breath. May all my thoughts be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let all sinners vanish from the face of the earth. Let the wicked disappear forever. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's good, Joe. Thank you. I mean, we could just let that video keep playing because it's like, that could be the sermon. I mean, some of those images on there are just so beautiful. Like, and like the fact that some of these places in the world actually exist, that these animals actually exist, it's incredible. Uh, and I think this is exactly what the psalmist is getting at here. Wants, to, wants us to reflect on is the beauty of the creation. Because the overall thrust of the psalm is that there's just this sitting in a sense of awe and wonder as he or she contemplates the beauty of God's creation and and glorifying him for a a God who can be so creative and has such majesty. Like I like that it says, What a variety of things that you've made. In wisdom you've made them all. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Like, Have you ever been so taken with a beautiful sunset? or like a mountain range, or the clouds, or uh, whatever it is uh, that you see, maybe it's like a child's smile, uh, that you almost feel like, oh, it's like you almost have to look away, because it's so beautiful, you feel like, we're not worthy, we're not worthy, you know? It's like a gift that God let you see that, that God let you experience that, and, and like it just naturally, like, we can't help but praise God and give him thanks for those kind of opportunities. And so uh, I think that that's kind of what the psalmist is going through here. I, I wonder if the psalmist, as they wrote this, uh, wasn't sitting in some place like that, just writing in their journal and just and, and laying this all out, this gratitude. So we're going to take a look at this psalm and, and just kind of explore it a little bit. Um, in the opening verses, God's described uh, like in like clothing terms, that he's clothed with the beauty of his creation, Robed with honor and majesty, dressed in a robe of light, like, like all the colors of a, of a beautiful sunset, like the, the technicolor dream coat, God wearing that. Uh, also for the interior designers in the room, um, Mary, where's Mary? I thought I saw her. Uh, uh, that, you know, he stretches out the starry curtain 
of the heavens. Like, have you ever been someplace where it's so dark that you can actually see the whole Milky Way? And it's like, it's, it's awe-inspiring, you know? Um, or you, you see, um, you know, I, I think even in the ancient world, too, like with, with all, all the light pollution and stuff that we have today, they, they probably saw that a lot more often than we do. Um, and for, if there's any builders in the room, God is described as being like a builder, too, laying out the rafters of his home in the rain clouds. It's such beautiful imagery. Uh, and then we hear echoes of the Genesis account here, too, in the creation, that like when God speaks, things happen. At his command, the waters flee and make room for dry ground. God has authority over his creation. It almost makes me think of like uh, somebody who's got a dog that's really loyal and understands commands really well and just wants to please their master. That, that's like what the creation is in its relationship to God. Uh, God's also described as a provider. That he provides water and food and shelter to the plants and to the animals so that they can thrive and they can produce more life. And, and he provides for human beings, too. For the livestock and for the plants. Uh, wine for people, olive oil for their skin softener. Who needs dove when you got olive oil? <laughs> and bread. I'm sure it's bredico bread. It's my favorite. Um, and then personally, I love the animals that he mentions here, too, because uh, animals are just awesome. They're so funny. They're so silly. They're so beautiful. There's so many different things that animals do. Like he mentions the, the wild donkeys. Anybody seen the burrows? out at um, uh, Custer State Park. You know, like, like they're just, they're funny. They come into your car window and eat your food, whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, it makes me think of them, too. Uh, and, of course, birds. He mentions them twice, storks in particular, like, like singing in the branches and, and, like, making their homes by the rivers. It just made me think of Wisconsin. Uh, and the mountain goat. You know, we're not that far from the Black Hills. I go out there multiple times every single year. And, uh, you know, you don't see mountain goats all the time, but when you do, it's pretty cool. And, like, I'm not talking about, like, when you're by Mount Rushmore and you see the goat by the side of the road, because I'm pretty sure people feed them, and they just, they know where the food's at, right? I'm talking about, like, when you're in the woods with nobody around and you come across a mountain lion, like, or not a mountain lion. <laughs> yeah, the mountain goat. It's a little better. Um, but that too, that'd be pretty cool. Never seen a mountain lion, but I, I want to someday. Um, but anyways, I remember we were taking this uh, group of campers from high school camp uh, hiking uh, into the wilderness in the Black Hills, and we came around this corner. We were getting toward the top of this place that we were climbing up to, and there's this big, strong mountain goat just right there. And like all of these kids that like spend most of their time looking at their phones are just like in awe of this beautiful creature. And it just like stood there for a while and let us look at it. I mean, we were like, 20, 30 feet away from it, and then it just kind of walked away, and we never saw it again. You know, it's, it's awe-inspiring to see that kind of stuff. Um, and then it mentions a hyrax in here, and I had to look up what a hyrax is. I didn't even know, and so here's a picture of a hyrax. Look at that little guy. They're, they're like a little rock creature that lives in, in Africa, like a little rodent, and, and I just love that the psalmist points them out, too, you know? Because, like, sometimes we think of rodents as just, like, ah, eh, insignificant, like they're a pest. But, like, he saw the beauty in it. And, and I, that's how I feel about, like, squirrels and chipmunks because they're just so funny and they have so much character. We have this one squirrel. He hangs by his back legs from our tree upside down and, like, stretches his front legs out. And I don't know. They just they crack me up. So, um, so I can see why the psalmist talks about these little rodents. Um, and then there's forest animals that prowl in the night, and lions and creatures in the sea, including the leviathan that plays in the sea. I love the way that that's described. And, and leviathan is like kind of a, uh, you know, some people debate on, on what that means. It's like some sort of a sea monster, mythical sea creature that they talk about in um, Old Testament times. But, but maybe it's referring to whales or something like that. Who knows? Whatever it is, it's big and it's intriguing in the sea. And the, mo the moon and the sun and the seasons, the day and the night, and all the natural rhythms that give structure to our lives. That's been going on and on since the beginning of the time. It, it's almost like the psalmist can't stop like gushing. He's like, look at this, and look at this, 
And, and then there's this too, you know, like, have you ever like with your phone after a really cool trip, you're like trying to show people all the pictures? Like, I'm sure the psalmist would be like, oh yeah, and check this one out. And, and check this one out. And you know how like the pictures, it's like, it doesn't do it justice. Like, you just had to be there. It's, it's almost like the psalmist is saying that to us. And then um, he says this, O oh Lord, what a variety of things you've made. In wisdom, you've made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. And then he's like, and here's the ocean. Like he, like he still wants to just keep going with it too. It's vast and wide. It's teeming with life of every kind, both large and small. I know that we can all relate to this psalm. Because we've all been there at one time or another where we're looking at the beauty of God's creation and just going, oh. and, and, and what else can you do? But it just like comes out of you. Like, just thank you, God. Thank you for this. And so what can we take from the 104th Psalm other than just having a big amen? I think one of the things is that we see that God is the source of all that is beautiful and lovely and praiseworthy. It says, The creatures depend on you to give them food as they need it. When you supply it, they gather it. You open your hand to feed them, and they are richly satisfied. At our cabin, which we're going to on vacation here after church today, um, like the chipmunks, you can hold like stuff in your hands, and they'll come up and sit in your hand and, and eat it right out of your hand. It makes me think of that. But if you turn away from them, they panic. When you take away their breath, they die and turn again to dust. When you give them your breath, life is created and you renew the face of the earth. Uh, see all the things that we have in this life that are beautiful and good and praiseworthy and awe-inspiring. Uh, it all comes from the creative love of God. It's a gift that he's given to us. And I wonder if that's why there's kind of like that weird passage there right toward the end. It seems like it's kind of intrusive almost, uh, where it talks about uh, letting the wicked and sinners just disappear or vanish. It's almost like, hey, if you don't get it, if this just doesn't create, like, and you just want to like pour concrete all over everything and exploit it and use it, then forget you. Like, that's almost what it seems to be saying here. God deserves all the praise because look at the incredible life in this world that he's given us. Um, the second thing I think that we could take from it is that the Lord takes pleasure in all that he has made. And so we should too. Like if it matters to him, it should matter to us as well. And in the Genesis account, um, human beings are, are privileged with the opportunity to be able to care for his creation, to, to tend it, and to name the animals. And so you know what? I'm, I'm speaking to the pet owners here in this place. Uh, if you have a pet and you love them, maybe it's a dog, somehow, some of you, a cat. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. There's nice cats out there. There are. Uh, or a gerbil or a guinea pig or a fish or whatever it is. Like, they, they become part of us. We really love these little creatures. And, and I find that for some reason, when we talk about, like, emphasizing the creation and the animals and this sort of thing, for some reason, Christians get a little bit weird about it. Like, well, let's not make too big a deal out of that. And I, and I don't know what the deal is. Like, maybe it's because we're afraid that we're going to, like, praise the creation rather than the creator. And it's appropriate. We should have our priorities set in place. But this is important to God. Like if you've got a pet and you love him and you named him and you feed them, you care, you're, you're living out your divine command. All right? And so sometimes when our pets, that like they're so significant to us. Like uh, Leo just makes me so happy. I, I, of course, I got to have a picture of Leo here. This is him just enjoying the sunlight. He loves to lie on his back in the sun and just drink it in. And he's so funny. And, and you know you have a million pictures of your pets on your phones too, you know. Um, they bring us so much joy. And then when that day comes when we have to say goodbye to them, it's like, it's so hard, isn't it, you know? Like, I, like it's, it's a different kind of mourning. You know, it's, it's different than with the human being, but sometimes I think we tend to kind of poo-poo it and say, like, well, it's, it's not really that important. It's just a dog or whatever. No, it's not. Like, they matter to God, too. The Lord takes pleasure in all 
he has made. And so you have a memorial service for your pet when they pass away, and you thank God for them, okay? The Psalms would have us do this. Uh, the third thing that I think we could take from this is we need to take time to stop and smell the roses. Um, this psalm should encourage us to be more attentive to God's creation uh, because God softens our hearts through his creation. God, God reveals himself to us through his creation. And if you don't believe me, ask Paul. All right? Romans 1.20, he says this, For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth, and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature. And if this is true, uh, then we need to spend some time basking in the sacredness of God's creation because we learn things about God that we can only learn from immersing ourselves in his creation and, and giving thanks for it. Like, take that time to marvel at the sunset when you see it. Don't just look at it and go, oh, cool, you know? Uh, like, just soak it in. Drink it in. Give God thanks for it. For that mountain range, man, I think about when we're out at Camp Judson. Every night at Vespers, as the sun's setting and we're worshiping God, you can see the mountains in the background. You see all the beautiful people that you're gathered with. Uh, like, that's just, like, praiseworthy. You, you see the Milky Way up there in the sky. Like, that's praiseworthy. And, and these are, like, the big grand things, like a, a huge ocean or, or a raging river that just, like, make us stand in awe. But sometimes I found, too, it's the little small things that are also really significant. Like, like, have you ever gotten down close and just, like, looked at the lichen that forms on rocks and, like, how colorful it is? Or, like, the patterns on a seashell, like, how, how mathematical it is? Like, it's, it's beautiful in and of itself. I remember when we were kids, uh, Mom and Dad took us to California, and we went to the tide pools in San Diego. And I don't know if you've ever looked at those, but, like, in, in a little pool about this big that, like, water is left over in the rocks after the tide goes away— there's like, you could walk right past it and think nothing of it, but there's a whole world in there. I mean, there's like sea anemones, and there's starfish, and there's these tiny little crabs. And if you just stop and watch, the whole thing comes to life. And it's just like, God made this stuff. Like, and I think about that when I go hiking. All, this stuff is going on whether we realize it or not, just because God loves it. And he cares about it, you know? And in a world when we are so busy, 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 and we constantly have our faces in a screen just zoning out, um, we're, we're bombarded with not paying attention and being present to God's creation and the people around us. And so I think this psalm invites us to just stop. Just look at it, enjoy it. Let it just like heal your soul. We need it. And finally, uh, all of this should just lead us to worship God with thanksgiving. As the psalmist says, I will praise my God with my last breath. Let all that I am praise the Lord, because we are part of the creation. That last breath that you just took is part of God's creation, and it's a gift to you. It gave you life. Everything's a gift. And I think that this is the, the power of the 104th Psalm, is it just invites us into that. Don't forget. Don't take this beautiful life for granted. Don't take these beautiful, this beautiful world, the beautiful people that God's given us for granted because it's all his. And he's proud of the things that he's made, and he loves it, and we should too. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. God, we marvel at your creativity. Uh, sometimes you listen to, to music that a musician writes, like the stuff that John uh, put out today and what these musicians do up here on the stage. And, and sometimes I'm like, how do they do that? How, how do they even have that kind of creativity and to make that up seemingly out of thin air? But Lord, everything that we do is inspired by something that you gave us. Uh, and somehow you made it all out of nothing which just says so much about your character and how incredible you are, God. And so help us not to take that for granted. Help us to just stand back in awe of the mystery of your power and your goodness and your love. 
We thank you for your creation, Lord. Help us not to take it for granted. We thank you for the way um, that you bring healing and nourishment to our souls uh, through these beautiful places, through our pets, uh, through all of the different ways that um, you bless us, uh, not only through people, but through this, this world that you've given us, Lord. Uh, and I pray, Father, that as we see it, uh, that we would take the time uh, to give you thanks and praise and glory and honor because you are a good, good Father. You do love us deeply. And we thank you for the gift of your world. We thank you for the Psalms that um, help us to, to have words uh, to be able to express our gratitude for you and for music too, Lord. I know when St. Saint, Saint Augustine said that um, when we sing, we pray twice. Uh, and so uh, hear our songs too, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, if during the final song, if you'd like to be prayed over, uh, feel free to make your way to the north wall over here. We'd have uh, Naomi and a few other people that would be happy to pray for you.